You are the first pharmacist to be appointed president of the National Association for Primary Care. So congratulations. And now could you explain to us what is the National Association for Primary Care and, and what does it do? Um, the NAPC, is National Association of Primary Care, is an organisation that is very much about how do we deal with care outside hospital. So, and one of the things about it as an organisation, historically, it was very much historically came from the same place. Primary care was about medicine and therefore doctors and general practice. But there was a realisation many, many years ago that actually that wasn't the solution. So their perception and de de description of primary care is basically everything outside hospital, whether that's social care, whether that's uh, voluntary sector, whether that's community services, whether that's pharmacy, dentistry, optometry, general practice. It's all of it. And the role of the NAPC has been to be about how do we improve care at local level very much. So originally, one of the going back a few years, they created the concept of primary care home, which was about local working based around populations of between 50 and 100,000 so that you had a group of people who were responsible for the care of the population within that area. NHS England got hold of that and unfortunately or fortunately for them, but partly from the NAPC, they created this, this thing called primary care networks. And primary care networks were almost a, a way of trying to take the principle of primary care home and deliver it across the country. But the whole principle of primary care home and the way the NAPC operates is about enabling people at local level to build things from the ground up in a way and to think about how and what they need to do. And so now what they talk about is neighborhood care because it's just trying to provide a slightly different language. So it's how do you build a wraparound service around people, around populations, population-based health. So the population health outcomes principle came again from the National Association of Private Care. So in a way, a lot of the, the thinking that now goes on at national level has come from that organization and its thought pieces and some of the um, extremely talented people that they, they have that work for them and work with them. Mm, very interesting. And as the incoming president of NAPC, what are your aspirations for your term of office? For me, the, in a way, the challenge has been that still from a general perspective, we tend to start from a biomedical model. And one of the things that I want to do in the conversation, one of the reasons I got involved with the NAPC to start with, was start to break those barriers down. And I remember when I first started, I always used to have to say, and don't forget about pharmacy. And it became really interesting that a lot of the time, as time progressed, they go, before I'd say anything, they go, and yes, we mustn't forget pharmacy before you say anything, Ash. So the message got through and they started to recognise the opportunity. And for me, it's about in this role is to say, yes, we are seeing beyond general practice, beyond medicine, about how the whole of primary care is more involved. And for me, it's bringing a slightly different perception, thinking, direction in the way that some of those things happen from, a, from an APC perspective. So being able to be a voice on behalf of the broader perception of primary care is very much where I come from, because just as much as for pharmacy, many of the other people involved in primary care in its broadest context are forgotten voices. So I want to be in the same way to be seen as as this forgotten voice of pharmacy is also the forgotten voice for everybody else that may be out there that we need to be thinking about more. So for me, it's very much more about almost driving home this, this difference between primary care and general practice and the fact that two terms are not interchangeable. And if you want to talk about general practice, you might talk about primary medical care and primary pharmaceutical care and primary dental care and primary optometry care, but altogether they provide primary care. And that includes, as I say, voluntary sector, community sector, all of the other providers that can help support 
patients and the public to improve their care. And if we get this right, the principle has to be how do you support neighborhoods to build more resilience within their populations, which enables the clinicians, whoever they are, the professionals, to be there to provide the care that's needed at a time when it is needed, rather than sometimes being some of the things that they're supporting people in its in a in a way that isn't necessarily their um what they're there for. There are things that the community can do for itself more effectively if we help them to do it. And now to pull all this together, you've covered an awful lot of ground today. Could you just recap for us, what is your message for community pharmacists and for integrated care services and possibly even for Mr. Barclay, the Secretary of State for Health and Social Care? My message to a great extent to pharmacists is to recognise how skilled and talented they are and to recognise they can use those skills and talents to provide better care and support better care for the public we are there to support. To the ICSs and to the pharmacists within the ICSs, think about how you can integrate with others. Don't think about how it's just about you. Think about how you work with others. You have to remember as a system, we are a number of cogs, whether you're a pharmacist, whether you're a medic, whether you're a nurse, whether you're a dentist, we are cogs who support the care of people. And it's about how we work collaboratively that is important, that will deliver what we need to deliver. So there's very much a bit about going and being part of the ICS, but not just saying, I am the only solution you have. It's about how am I working collaboratively with all of my colleagues and for those colleagues to do the same thing and think about how we're all working together to provide the best care for the people. And what we have to do, we talk about it, but we don't have, we've not necessarily, not necessarily done it historically, is we need to move to people-centered care. We've talked about it many, many times, but if you look at a lot of the work that happens, it te still tends to be driven by what the professionals, the clinicians, whoever they are, can do, rather than what the public need. And what we have to do is move much closer to the being able to deliver what the public need. And by supporting that, we're then able to deliver better outcomes for everybody that we serve. To the Secretary of State, I've, as I said in one of my tweets, we can help. There are things that we can do. Medicines are the single biggest intervention of the NHS. So actually pharmacists are a critical part of it, not just pharmacists at hospital level or pharmacists in general practice or pharmacists in um, ICSs or community pharmacists, all pharmacists have a role to play in supporting improving care. If you really want us to help, we can. Just come and ask us, let us. We want to be part of your solution. We can be part of your solution, but you have to include us for that to happen. Ash Sony. Thank you very much for sharing your insights and experiences with us today. That really has been terrifically interesting. For more information about Ash Sony's work, please visit our website using the link in the description and be sure to sign up for more news, videos and journals. For updates straight to your inbox, please use the link below. And thanks for watching. 